Can I play devil's advocate a minute and ask a question? You and I have done hundreds of soil tests together. Very rarely do we see molybdenum in our soils. Very rarely do we see any cobalt in our soils. Where the, the plant is still producing something. Where is it getting that? If we can't detect it in the soils, we, like in Iowa, we can't detect molly in our soils. It has to have some molly. Where is that coming from? Or is it there's some still in the soil that just can't be detected? Okay. I'm confused on that, and I have a lot of people asking me that. Okay, so let's just take a half a second and talk about something that's going on in the soil down here, okay? Now, when we get a soil report, what you see when your farm boss goes in and gets a soil report, what they're looking for is what is in solution, okay? Because as much as you and I like to think that, that our cells are going to enjoy that chicken or that broccoli or that roll in the same form that we enjoyed it, they're not. They don't eat like we eat, okay? That food we ate has got to get broken down, dissolved, and made to go into a liquid. And that's what our enzymes and our microbes are doing. So in a soil report, they're looking for what is in the liquid because plants can only take up what is soluble. They're not rock eaters, okay? They don't go eat chunks of organic matter. They take up what's in the water. So this is the interesting thing. And when we talk about drought, let's talk about drought for half a second. Your plant roots are down here pulling up water. And then up here, they're transpiring 99.5% percent of the water that they take up. So are they after water? If they're sweating it out? They're after the soluble nutrition in the water. That's what they filter out and hold. They get rid of the water. So if my soil has no soluble minerals, guess what my plant does? Nothing. He gets nothing, but it pulls water day and night. Because it's not looking for water, it's looking for food. You and I are no different. If we don't get fed, we're looking for food. Once we get fed, we're not looking for food anymore. Okay? So, in a drought situation, if your plants are mineral deficient, they will dehydrate those soils way faster. If there's a good balance of minerals in those soils, you'll produce twice the grain on the same water in a drought year. Because the plant's not looking for water, it's looking for nutrition. When it gets nutrition, it stops pulling the water. Okay, so it has to be in solution. It has to be dissolved in water to get picked up. Okay, now the rest of the stuff is what they call in or unavailable or in soluble. Okay, so on a soil report, I can have, on one of Ed's, I can have 500 pounds of phosphate in solution, right? And the insoluble side, I could have 5,000 or 10,000 pounds of phosphate in the soil but I'm only going to have this much in solution. This is what a plant can get. Right? So I've got more there, but God will never put everything in the soil into solution because the first thing is, is if it rained, it would all go with the water. It would be instantly gone. So how nature holds minerals is some is available and the bulk of it is always in reserve. Now, the plant cannot come down here and get this. That's not in a form it can use. However, a microbe can. And so what happens is, if you have a wide enough range of biology, there's some microbes that will come down here and pull the molybdenum out of this reserve that soil tests don't report. And they'll convert it 
and put it into a form that the plant can use. But you've got to have the right microbe. And the amount of toxins, the amount of glyphosate that we've used, we don't have the right microbes. And so we have a soluble portion in our soils and an insoluble portion. Okay? And so what happens is, as we've grown crops, sold them down the road, fed the animals, we've depleted our trace mineral bases, and some of them very badly. We look at the levels of molybdenum and cobalt. They should have, oftentimes we see them at one-tenth of the amount, one one-hundredth of the minimum amount. And, it, and if our organism, our microbes don't have them, our plants don't have them, we don't make these compounds that keep things working. Okay? Ed. Going back to, I don't know if you're done, but the, the, the soil sample we looked at yesterday of one of our organic fields, that D1, mm -hmm. we got a three-year history without putting any fertilizer on. These uh, trace elements are on the rise because the mic micro population is growing and it makes them soil. The biology changes all kinds of things in your soil. It changes compaction. It changes pH. It changes mineral availability. It changes all kinds of things. And so when we work on the farming side, our whole point is, yes, we have to grow yield, but we have to have incredibly good content in that yield. And so especially it's critical if you're feeding what you're growing, okay? And that's why we probably should have had the poultry conference first so you guys would go home and kick your farm bus's butt and say, get in there because I am inheriting your problems. If you don't have this right, I don't have it in my feed. And so anyway, we did it backwards, but we're learning. We'll, we'll, we'll put the poultry guys first next time. But the cool thing is, is you can fix this. Ed, what's the falling number on your wheat last year? On the, on the Durham? Durham? It was like 500. On, on one step, the other one was 480. What, what's the normal falling number on what they get in? Three, 320 is a good one. They don't want it at less than 250, yeah. but 300 is good. Now, so what do those guys tell you about your grain? I don't want it. <laughs> Why do they want it? Just pay me more, I tell them, and you can get it. Because it's 100. She told me at the Pasta, Montana, it's the best dirt they've ever seen. Now, that is great grain. I mean, I got a lot of grain growers in Idaho, and when they start hitting 350 on their, their falling numbers, they're strutting like a peacock. And when you tell them, I got fours and 500s, they're going, bullshit. Bingo, Paul. <laughs> that hurts us, too. Because the falling numbers are better, it all goes for and so th we can't if it's, if the components aren't there it, they can't get converted you know and so these are just functions on on how things get put together you know there's there's a lot we can go through all these B vitamins these are very important you won't live without B12 your your chickens won't function without B12 Everything requires this stuff, but if we don't have the minerals, they don't get made. We scan, like the scan, we scan, scan the wheat raised last year in barley. The minerals in these organic fields are, are way up just because we got the microbes to, to go with. And we can put these minerals into the plant so they function and we can put them into the soil. Ed does it both ways. You know, we're rebuilding the soils, we're rebuilding the microbial populations, and, and so 
the grains begin to show, the plants will say, I'm doing better on what I have to work with. And so that's the critical thing here. Okay, so again, more vitamins, they're doing all kinds of things.